All right, so when we look at airway management, in terms of you know taking care of the patient, the most important thing that we do is gonna be our airway management. Without that, none of our other interventions matter. When we start to look at our primary assessment and we break things down are ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. So we're gonna take this down, we're gonna take it step by step. So when we look at just our airway, when we look at this, we've got three components of our airway assessment and we need to make sure that we check off each one before we can move on to our breathing assessment. They go in a particular order and they have to be done in that order. First thing we're looking at, the question that we're asking is, is the airway open? So if the patient's conscious and alert and talking to us, the airway's open. If we have a patient who's unresponsive, now we have to look at our mechanisms for opening that. So we have our modified jaw thrust, if it's a trauma patient, where we have some you know, concerns of there being you know, injury to the brain, to the neck, to the back, or well, we can use our head, tilt, chin lift. When we look at our second question, we're looking at, is the airway patent? Which means, is it, is it clear? Is there any type of sputum, blood, teeth, tissue? Is there anything in there that's going to obscure the ability for us to deliver oxygen to the patient's lungs? If there is some type of obstruction, then we have to look at our suctioning devices and we need to manage that. The third question is, a patient have the ability to manage their own airway? Somebody who's alert and conscious, they're able to protect their airway with their gag reflex. They're able to sit up, they talk to us, they're able to cough. All of these are reflexes to protect foreign bodies from getting down into our lungs so we don't aspirate and we end up with pneumonia. Somebody who's unresponsive, they lack the ability to do so. So any patient who's unresponsive, we now have to do an intervention to be able to secure that. Okay? So we start kind of right at that, that very beginning of this airway management when we come in and we've determined that we've got a patient who's unresponsive and we now need to intervene to open up the patient's airway. You always want to manage airway from the, the patient's head. So we always want to be up at the airway where now I can see the patient and this is where most of the time the team lead is going to be because now I can see everything that's happening. When we come in, if I have no concern of there being a problem with the patient's you know, uh, C-spine, now what we can do is a head tilt chin lift. When we do this, you want to grab the, the mental, right? So you're grabbing the chin and you want the bony prominence of the chin. You don't want to hit the soft tissue because if you come in the soft tissue, we can now cause damage. So we want to come right on that bony prominence and then on the, the forehead. So when we do this, we're doing a head tilt chin lift and we can see that we have this manipulation of the neck. Obviously, if we had concerns that you know, there might be a you know, type of, of cervical injury, an injury to the neck, we wouldn't want to do this. This maneuver allows us a much better opportunity to displace that tongue, and that's what this does. So by manipulating the neck, we're able to pull the tongue back into position and offer that glottic opening to be able to, to open up this airway and have a, a clear conduit. So that's how we look at it. We come upon our patient, bony prominence, head tilt, chin lift, it's a simple maneuver, okay? That will help displace the tongue so we don't swallow our tongue, but the tongue certainly can fall back and now include that glottic opening like we've talked about. If I have an injury to the neck, where now we're looking at taking C-spine precautions. So now somebody's gonna hold this patient's head and neck, keeping it in what we call a neutral position. So we want them kind of in that alignment so that there, there's no manipulation, there's no bending. So if we have a concern with damage to the, the spinal column where we have a brain bleed, we're not manipulating and making this worse. So now what we do, we want to be able to open this airway to displace the tongue to be able to check and make sure that it's patent and eventually be able to potentially have to ventilate this patient. So now what we want to do is what's called a modified jaw thrust. So when the patient is unresponsive and we have concerns for uh, trauma precautions, my, my hands come on the maxilla. Right, so the stable portion, and this is where now I'm stabilizing the face. My fingers are coming underneath the mandibular process, which is that bony prominence at the jaw. Remember, the mandible is the only part of the face that moves. So now what we're doing is this is a very small movement, and what we're doing is we're displacing the jaw. So this is where I always think of like those old cartoons where you have the, the stuck-up guy in the smoking jacket and the, the long cigarette holder and that he has a protruding jaw. That's what we're doing. We're looking to have that jaw displaced so we're moving it a little bit forward and a little bit down. So when we come in, the maneuver when we come is just this. So we can see it's not, a, it's not as uh, you know, uh, the, the full range of motion that we get with the head tilt chin lift, but it's just enough for us to be able to look in and be able to manage to suction if we need to. 
Now the thing is, once you have done one of these maneuvers, so if I had to do a modified jaw thrust to open up the airway, I can't let go, because as soon as I let go, it falls back into place, and that tongue now is gonna be, you know, occluding the airway. Remember that the tongue is the number one thing that occludes the airway. So, head, tail, chin lift, modified jaw thrust, those are two ways that we're looking to open the airway. We can't suction, we can't check for patency, and we can't secure it until we've done that, so that's our first step.